Hey pilots, I was asked to do a second look at the 302, Costco 302 or i302, the second half of that package with the Yak 3RD. I've been trying all week to get a good match and it just hasn't happened, so we're gonna have to make do with two kind of subpar matches, but I do think they illustrate uh, conveniently the kind of the things that I struggle with. First thing I'm gonna say right here, notice uh, as I'm boosting upwards, um, it's yellow. I'm at 360 and it's in the yellow. Uh, what does that mean? That means that this plane has a very, very unusual characteristic that not many planes do, and that is that its cruise speed is lower than its minimal optimal speed. So what does that mean? That means when it's doing its cruise speed, its performance characteristics are worse than normal. Uh, so just flying around without your rocket engines activated, this plane is even worse than it is on paper in terms of its handling. And uh, so that's something to be aware of, like right off the bat. Um, and it's not something that a lot of people pick up on. So just wanted to go ahead and start the video with that. Uh, I've done some calculations. As far as I can tell, unless my math is wrong, there is no way to get the cruise speed above um, its minimum optimal speed. So even if you sell out completely on a cruise speed build for this aircraft while specialized, you will not be able to get its cruise speed above that minimal. So your cruise speed is always going to be in yellow no matter what you do. First thing, not many people know that about this plane, I don't think, so I wanted to point it out. Second thing, I just used six seconds of boost going up in the air. I do have, um, and you can see I didn't, didn't get very far, right? Um, this plane has a top speed of 840 or so right now in its current configuration. And, you know, if you're going in a straight line, as you can see me doing here, look how much quicker I boost. Uh, but when I do any sort of vertical maneuver, I lose that, that boost. It doesn't go nearly as quickly. You can see I'm able to get up here fairly easily. The Yak can get there much easier than this, right? And so that's one of the other things is, despite the fact that you're rolling with essentially three engines on this aircraft, the two under the, I don't know if this is a, a third engine back here. I believe it is. Um, so you've got three essentially. You know, your, your acceleration in the game, I don't know about real life, but your acceleration in the game is not as good. And uh, so no matter how you slice it, it just, it doesn't, doesn't speed up as well as the Yak does. And it should probably, right? And it should probably have a, a boost curve closer to the Yak 3RD um, or to um, the Japanese version of the um, Comet, the Schmidt 163. 162. My brain is fried, y'all. It's been a week and a half. Um, so yeah, the, the, and uh, so it, that's one of the letdowns for me on this plane is the acceleration is not what you would think it would be, and that's a struggle, um, particularly because again, on paper it's got an excellent climb rate. Uh, on paper, you've got these you know tremendous uh, boosted engines here, but uh, just know it's a little bit disappointing in that regard as well. So, uh, with that out of the way, you also have guns. You do have four 20 millimeter Shivax from 1941. So you're at tier seven. We're looking at end of World War II era aircraft and you have four guns that are from the beginning of World War II. Now they're not that terrible. I would say they're mediocre. Um, one of the things you'll notice immediately is the overheat time is about four seconds. So as you saw there, you know, if you don't start getting those hits lined up pretty quickly and pretty easily, you're going to overheat. That's not as big of a deal as you would think just because you are an energy plane. So you are going to make kind of these slashing attacks for the most part. You're not going to be locked onto someone's tail the way you are, say, with the Yak 3RD, you know, where you just need that extra overheat time. So, um, you know, they chew through things okay, but um, because of the overheat capacity, if there's anything you can't chew through in those four seconds, you have a problem. And so this is the second thing I really wanted to address is, uh, you know, I've heard more than one person tell me, fly it like a mini heavy. And there's two problems with that. One is the guns, as you're about to see here. So this is a on tier, you know, battle. I'm top tier, I think it's a six, seven match. Um, and you see, I'm, I'm struggling to chew through this bomber, right? I'm trying to keep the guns cool. I just can't do it. And um, I didn't take any whole lot of damage really from the gunners. Thankfully, these are bot aircraft, bot controlled um, Dorniers. So I didn't end up having that much of a problem with it. But if you were trying to use this as a mini heavy, and one of the things you're gonna be doing is taking down enemy bombers, um, you're not gonna do it against player bombers. It's just not gonna happen. You're gonna get chewed up so fast. 
because, as you may have noticed, you only have 280 hit points and your resistances are minimal. I mean, absolutely minimal. We'll circle back to this in the second video I have for you because uh, you'll get to see just how bad it can get uh, when you're chasing them. So, you know, in that sense, I'm not sure it's great to use as a mini heavy. You don't have the guns, you don't have the survivability, which really are two key components of a heavy fighter that allow it to operate in the way that it does. And you can see you're diving. I get up to max speed easy, right? With the gravity on my side. We're gonna dive in. This is the only other player in the match. He's rolling a 265 for whatever reason. He was slow to arrive here and you can tell no, you know, um, actually I think he captured the garrison and then it almost instantly got flipped by my bots. So uh, I did the airfield and then went and got the mining plant. Um, yeah, I, would, I don't know, I'm not a ground attack pro, but uh, in this case for me, I would have probably gone for the mining plant first. So I'm gonna go over and finish this P39, which I didn't finish in my first slashing attack and I still don't finish there. Again, you know, the guns are mediocre. They're, they're not anything to write home about, particularly if you're looking for, you know, just that solid firepower in an aircraft and an energy fighter like this one. And here's that, okay, so I just went head on for a second there with the P-51 and you can see I lost a significant chunk of uh, my health pool here. And I'm lucky I did not get a critical there. Uh, if you do get a critical, this thing has a you know, roughly 12 second turn time. So that P-51 would have just initiated a maneuver fight with me and taken me down. Now it's a bot, so you might can outsmart him, but if it's another player, you know, good luck with that. So. We're going back in the air, we're going after these bombers. And again, because it's a bot bomber, because I've got health up here, and I don't get the kill, because things are there. Uh, and I get rammed by one of my own aircraft, which is fabulous, lose another 50 HP that way. Uh, by the way, I just noticed something. I have to go back and look at old recordings. I don't think this is that's been true the whole time, but for these recordings, for whatever reason, the kill feed is blurred out. I didn't do that. I, I don't know if that's an update from OBS or if it's something from one of the mods that I had that I didn't realize that I activated Whatever it is, um, you're not seeing the kill feed over there Or maybe it's always been there and I've only just now woken up to that So there you go because we're defending at the airfield and because we're an energy fighter. Um, I'm doing vertical loops over the airfield uh, I don't have to worry about a human pilot here. So that's a fairly easy thing to do I'm just worried about the ground attacker, but he has disappeared, and as you can see on the mini-map, he is headed over to the mining plant, and so I'm going to have to go deal with him. It's not going to matter at this point with superiority, and, you know, we're 30 seconds from the end of the match, but I'll boost over there anyway and see what I can do. And you can see there in a straight line without climbing too much. I'm able to get there, you know, with a little bit of inertia, but um, these, you know, and of course using the 10-second boost time as well. But just generally speaking, the thrust on these is not, acceleration is not what you would expect uh, from this particular plane. So there you go. That's about as good as it gets. Um, I could have showed you the worst that it gets, which is I did a 5v5 uh, at some point in the week and it was miserable. Um, I got jacked up by virtually every plane on the enemy team that actually had a human pilot. Um, I got chased as evidence of the lack of acceleration. I got chased down by a Reggio, by the Aero, the Italian uh, tier seven premium, uh, literally chased me down and shot me down <laughs> because your acceleration is poor enough and the range is good enough on those um, 20 millimeters uh, that, and your hit points are so low. That's a lethal combination, right? I could not escape his weapons envelope uh, before just getting absolutely wrecked. So. All right, so battle two. This one's an all bot battle, and so again, not very fast, but I did think it illustrated some more of what I'm talking about with this plane, which, you know, I wouldn't call it bad. Um, anytime you've got, you know, kind of energy characteristics and you can use some altitude to your advantage, um, it's going to be a decent plane. But again, you can see my cruise speed's 260 below minimum, you know, so on paper, I'm 12 second turn time right now in reality, you know, much worse than that. Um, and again, as long as I'm doing level, I'm not climbing too much, I can get a decent amount of speed boost, but um, I got to go through a couple of cycles, you know, you got to get through that, use that boost cooler to really get up into the top speed. And as you remember from the Yak 3 video, I had no problem sending the top speed there. Um, it was pretty, pretty quick and simple. So as a result of that, after these couple of battles, and I did these early in the week, um, I swapped over to um, an actual uh, boost uh, equipment, boost gear. 
and that went a little better for me. I would recommend that. I'm running a protection build right now, trying to mitigate some of the issues. Uh, but I, I don't did not was not happy with that. I would go back to uh, was running reinforced airframe in the um, the booster. Uh, so you can see here against two regular you know bot bombers, which is probably the equivalent of one human bomber on the turret controls. I absolutely got eaten up. I had two criticals within a matter of seconds. I'm still getting chewed up. I'm gonna have to break off. Like there's no way to to win this battle. The guns are too weak. My survivability is too low, right? And my acceleration is struggling in the vertical. Uh, in part, and by the way, in part, when you look at the under the hood stats on these two planes, um, this plane is significantly heavier than the Yak 3 RD is, as you can imagine, just looking at it, right? You got a, a full cabin style cockpit, um, you've got multiple engines on it, right? So, and again, I'm going to contribute what I can here, but I don't think I got the kill. If I did, I snaked it. It's hard to tell with the kill feed blurred out like that, which is just weird to me. I haven't noticed. Has that happened before? I'm going to go back and look at old videos. Um, but so far, we're up three to one. I wanted to secure that mining plant, which is why I came over here. And again, just to show you, you know, what does it look like when you use it as a mini heavy? Well, you get absolutely torn up. Uh, that's what happens when you use it as a mini heavy. You know, in terms of the diving, you know, kind of going through like this, I think that's, you know, probably the best you can do with it is use it in these kind of long slashing attack runs, um, dealing with aircraft in that way. And, you know, the elevators are not bad. Uh, the rudder's not bad. So you can loop over uh, without it being too onerous. Um, and so I would you know, stick to some vertical maneuvers as well as these kind of you know, slashing attack runs that you make uh, with an energy fighter. So what else? Um, Again, not, not sure it's a bad fighter, but if you're picking up a package, I don't think it's for this plane. I just don't think it's all that good in the final say. Um, I remember it being better when it first came out. Not sure if the meta just uh, cracked its back or, you know, transition to 2.0 or, or what. But um, it's not one that I fly very often. And, and for this very reason, it just feels like it doesn't, um, doesn't perform as well as virtually any other tier 7 premium I have. And... If I'm going to do a Soviet Tier 7 Premium, I'm probably going to do the Yak-3RD before I bring this one out, just because it tends to do stuff about the same. You know, in, in, in theory, the burst on this is better, um, and the altitude regime is better, and the top speed is theoretically better, but as we've seen, you know, not necessarily, <laughs> not particularly. So. Uh, I just feel like the Act 3RD does things better. Uh, I do get putting these together in a package, like why you would do that for folks. But for me, all I'm saying is the main draw of the package would be that Yak 3RD and not this I-302. Um, but there you have it. We're going to finish out this match uh, fairly strong, obviously. The bots are able to capture the other mining plant, and we're up 360 to 80, 370 to 80. So this one's a foregone conclusion, as it usually is when you're just facing bots. Unless the bots go crazy, right? You kind of get a bad, bad batch of bots, um, and then things can be painful. But you can see right there, by the way, that's kind of where that minimum, that cruise speed barrier hits you, right? Being in the, being in the yellow, it, it's just, it's a little wild to be have your, your maneuverability and your handling affected at 360 kph, right? That's weird. That's such a high floor on your uh, optimal speed that it's um, interesting to ponder. Um, and so because of that, I think you, know, you may end up over overusing the jets and you don't have a great deal of thrust in them anyway, particularly if you are using um, the boost equipment. You're gonna, you're gonna go down to five seconds instead of six at first. And then of course, just work your way down from there. Interestingly, um, I do think uh, there is a little bit of usefulness here for running extra dailies, right? Extra times fives or whatever else. And I do think there is a factor as well of people not necessarily knowing the aircraft very well. And so you might be able to get away with a few things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get away with. But generally speaking, you know, you're going to want to, going to want to, be very alert and be very careful when, when playing with this aircraft, right? 
Uh, I think I missed it earlier, but I had a Yak-9 pop a hole in me at one point and just lost a lot of HP. I'm surprised he didn't one-shot me. It must have been a wing hit or something. Um, but, you know, against, against these bots and against unskilled players, right, and when you're top tier, um, it can perform, certainly, as it's doing here. But, you know, your chances of getting all those things landing in your favor are slim, right? Uh, J4M knocks me out. Same tier, by the way. Think about that for a second. The J4M is the same tier as this aircraft. Um, <laughs> with, with not quite as much top speed, obviously, but much better gr crews, um, much better guns, more survivability. Um, I think better maneuverability as well, right? So um, maybe the 302 is one of those planes that could use a little bit of a buff. Um, I would do, if I were going to buff it, here, here's what I would do. I would do what we did with the, um, with the Antonov a while back where they boosted the, um, well, boost time actually. They increased to give it actually two seconds of boost. I would do that here as well. Um, I think that's what you would need to really get the most mileage out of these engines um, for it to work really well. Um, because it's just, it's just too short as it is, right? Um, it just doesn't feel like it gets you there unless it's specialized. If it's specialized, maybe it performs much better, but you're going to have to slog through this, right? Slog through this to get to the point uh, where you can specialize it or burn tokens. So if you got a bunch of extra tokens lying around, maybe you go ahead and do that. But, um, I just, you know, I'm not sure what its place in the lineup is. You know, I mean, you've also got the LA nine RD over here which is not great either, um, but a possibility. And then you got the TU-1, which we just had say on the Act-3T, um, which is not well liked, but I, en I enjoy it. I think it's, um, it's a fun plane to fly. But so you've got five, five of these at tier seven, four of which are light fighters. Um, and if you want to fly a 302 as a mini heavy, I, I think I'd probably fly the TU-1 instead as well, just because of what it brings to the table. So that's my two cents on the topic. Uh, I understand there might be others who have a different viewpoint, but just so you're aware, this is where I'm coming in at on the 302. If you want to pick up the package, I, I think you would pick it up for the Act 3 rd but again, you can get the Act 3 rd in unique crates. So do you need to pick up the package? Maybe not. Maybe spend your money on Vogel instead um, if you really want that. Um, I haven't had a chance to look too deeply at her characteristics, but I know Nova just put up a video on it. I know Postal's got a video on it. Go check those out. Um, yeah, Postal's videos again. Nice, huh? Uh, it's good to have him back uh, back uh, recording and putting stuff out. So there you go. Um, just a little bit on 302. Uh, having done this, um, and since other people have covered Vogel better than I can, we'll move back to that decision-making series and wrap up our period two aircraft. Uh, before we move into period one, which will be a sh much shorter series um, because there's less strategy, I think, in period one, even among the different classes. And then we'll hit period three there uh, to round out that series. So hope you guys are enjoying the game and your time. Um, hopefully you have time to play. It's been certainly a busy couple of weeks for me, so I've not been on as much as, as I have been in the past. Um, if uh, you haven't seen me online, I apologize for that. In a way, though, it's good. I'm saving my stamina for November for uh, that, uh, you know, uh, whatever the grind is going to be, I guess, for the SM91 and for the uh, Warplanes birthday celebrations. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. So if you have any questions, there's any plane you'd like me to cover or things you'd like me to cover, pop those in the comments below. I have had requests again on defensive fighting, getting somebody off your tail. We will cover those hopefully in a light fighter video um, for a decision making series. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, how you can do that, what that looks like, what some maneuvers are you can use. Uh, but other than that, um, if there's something else you'd like to see, let me know. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you in the skies over this weekend um, and in the hunt for Miss Vogel in the cockpit of her German plane. So until I see you again, good luck and good hunting.